So wait, walk me through your first apartments. Like what were your first apartment? I was you on. Got to LA? I was on. Um, I was on Speedway in Venice, and in fact, that was 19, I know Speedway, 1996, overlooking the beach. And I remember my buddy Tony came to visit me. Your lady. Yeah, we're good. Hold on. What do you need? What Just do you come need? in here. I can't do this whole fucking episode. Come on in. I didn't need anything. Oh. I just wanted to know if you needed anything. Oh, no, no. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm You're good. You're from I'm the good. South, huh? Yeah. Hey, come a, on in. We're talking about, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about houses. You and got where, a musical twang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I so like it. I like, uh, Brian's talking about his first apartment on Speedway in Venice. Yeah. Where's and Speedway? Speedway is on Navy and, and basically the ocean, okay, which is down in Venice. Okay. And I got this great apartment, and I was doing a, a little show called Mad TV, okay, mm-hmm. original cast member. I was 28, tight skin, athletic, <laughs> supple, like a, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a boy cat, okay, like a boy cat, <laughs> you understand? And uh, ran on the beach, did not wear a shirt. Um, ran on the beach? <laughs> sure I did, in sand. There's nothing like running in sand, brother. Oh my God. When I say run, I don't mean jog. You jog, okay? <laughs> I kick my knees high, I run hard. Right? Uh, okay? Uh, you understand? And I always long for a pull-up bar so I could uh, I could do what's called intervals. You know what interval training is? Of course not. Here's the bottom line. I get my heart going, all right? Anyway, the bottom line was uh, my buddy came to visit me and uh, we heard, he, I didn't hear it, he heard shots. And the next morning, and not even the next morning, about an hour later, they were chalking out the outline where a guy had been shot. In a, in a, and that's what Speedway, that's what Venice was. Right. And I was gonna buy a house on Indiana, and I remember I said to the guy, it was, it was a very, at the time, think about this in Venice, it was a huge house and it cost, I remember it cost, uh, Five hundred and seventy thousand no. dollars. When was something, this? Something crazy. Where 1980? I was like, eighty. <laughs> it was nineteen ninety six, ninety seven. I was like, what? How much? And I wanted to buy a house. Right. And it was like five hundred and seven or something crazy. And maybe yeah. it was almost six hundred. And I remember a dot com guy came in and bought it <gasps> out from under me. A dot com guy. But and I remember looking at him. He was a guy who um, I would have had no problem with. Nope, as in, like, if he came at me, yeah. I'd have no problem with him. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I put him on his back, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but the bottom line is, I remember he just looked like this kind of weak dude who was grinning and he had glasses on and he, he was a dot com guy, so he just bought it for cash. But long story short, I said to the cop who rolled up, I said, How dangerous is this area? I want to buy a house. And he goes, You see that fire hydrant right there? Yeah, he goes, so a fortnight ago, I remember he used the word fortnight. fortnight? I didn't know what it meant. Oh my God. And I go, fortnight? And he goes, a fortnight. I go, well, uh, uh, how are thee, first of all? And, <laughs> and he, uh, he said a guy was killed right there at that fire hydrant. And I remember thinking, it's a good thing I didn't buy this house. Of course, now I go, now I bought my first house on the Walk Streets, Noita Place, my first house for $350,000, ladies and gentlemen. It it sold in 2007 for and I sold it for 131. Wow. Now, you go try to buy it. Please go try to buy it. Please. It's a it's a cabin. It's a cabin. It's two bedroom uh two one and a half bathrooms. Please go try to buy it for under 2 million dollars. Isn't that crazy? crazy. It's well, insane. that's what happens when Google. That's a that's called a cataclysmic influx of money that can ruin the fabric of a community. And I agree I really with you. That. Yeah. Too much money because what happens is the 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 connections, the sort of the connections among people who are living there and working and are doing the things that all of us do mm-hmm. where where you have to do a whole bunch of stuff for yourself. Mm-hmm. That goes away. It does. Yeah, and you it's can, happened in this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. When we first went to this elementary school, it was 48% free lunch. Now it's 12. That's a bummer. That's huge. And in the course of seven years, yeah, it's a, a huge difference. And then the people, the elbow grease of the school is gone because yeah. no one that lives there now wants to put in any elbow grease. They just want to write your check. And you know, I think you, you're, you're obviously married to a comedy baron. <laughs> and uh, and uh, if you want to get tickets. You mean like a pilot? <laughs> well, if, if you want to get tickets, start saving now because Christ, you're packs them in. <laughs> but, but, it, but as a comic, it's funny because even if you continue to make money, if the minute you lose sight of the fact that you're exactly like your audience, right? Yeah, you're dead. I agree. That's so funny you say that. Yeah, because there is there is a part of you that wants that when you start, you want to get yourself to the next level. Yeah, and then once you get to that next level, you're like, oh wait, who the fuck am I anymore? Yeah, 
Well, it just means I've never been. I don't think celebrity actually exists. In other words, like I, I think what it means is just more people want to be around you maybe or take a picture with you. But, yeah. you know, I, I think I'm older now at 52 and um, young young men are looking for guidance as we do as young men because the world's still a great mystery. Yeah. And I never get tired of taking pictures with a young dude who says something like, I had a guy in Kansas City who said, man, you know, I, I went to Iraq and I had PTSD and you, you helped me. Dude. Your perspective, and he started to cry. He walked away and he was crying and his, his girlfriend, his wife was like uh, calling his name and uh, he couldn't turn around. I was like, damn, I had to get myself together. Right. There is there is something immeasurable about that. Oh. When a guy says, oh. you got me through two tours in Afghanistan and you're like, and you're just like, me? First of all, and, yeah, and by the way, the one, the time he's talking about, I don't remember it all. Of course not. I was just high and drunk and talking being shit. Being a on silly some, goose. And being being fucking. I being had no I, I, Like if you had told me at that moment, hey man, just for you know right, no, right now, there's a guy that's in Afghanistan that's got to go and do a couple fucking clicks. Or I don't even know what it's called, but yeah. like he's got to go into a village tomorrow <clears throat> and he's nervous and he's laying in bed and this is relaxing him. I would have never. I know. I would I would have I would have been so much more serious. <laughs> I know, man. Well, but the, but but you know, serious is not. You know that Schiller quote. Um, I like I like quoting uh, German philosophers, but he said, "Man is never more himself than when at play, and play being that which you would do for its own sake of doing it." Yeah. Uh, and and <clears throat> comedy's that way, and so there's something very powerful I think about when you're just doing, you're just being who you really are, which is you love to laugh. Dude, and you love making people. That's laugh. where okay, you can go now, Leanne. Okay, thank cool. you. It was good talking to you. Leanne, sorry, sorry, Leanne, ladies and gentlemen, Leanne. great job. Great Thank job. You, hey, was, uh, hey, text was, Heidi, please. Okay. She was hanging Thank on you. my every word. No, you, no. So wait. I so I know she was actually she could sit into the whole podcast. She would love that. I don't mind. Um, she, but oh uh, yeah, but I she she ends up talking over me. And so, <laughs> but like there is something very interesting in that I've always felt me and you connect more on the playful side mm -hmm. than like say. Uh, Burr and Rogan. Oh, Burr and those Rogan guys are, are serious. Are they're, they're serious, but, but I'm not. I don't mean this shitty. They're two of our good friends. Yeah. But like Burr and Rogan are definitely serious guys. Stanhope is Stanhope rides the fence. Yeah. I think Stanhope can be silly, but Stanhope is a serious. I would I would say that Stanhope, Burr, Burr and Rogan actually I would I would frame it differently. They are painfully honest, and and probably yeah. are able to sit in discomfort. And the discomfort of confrontation and truth longer and better That's than it. I can. That's it. And, I and get it all. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't have I don't have staying power. I talk oh. about fighting. Oh. I talk about fighting. Oh. I talk about being tough. And I'm not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge I'm phony. Yeah, I'm a huge phony. I don't like that. I'd rather way rather be a silly goose and, and be like, no, Rogan can sit in the deep and dark. And I, I've been with him. And I've known him for so long. I don't know Burr that way, but I, I suspect, and I've talked to Burr about that. And I, at now at my age, and I said this to you before I sat down because I was talking about some personal things. Uh, I don't want to lie anymore about anything. Yeah. I, I don't want to be. I don't want in any way to do even anything. I don't want to do. You know, I have to do press in Philly, but I don't because I sold out. So. I love Preston and Steve, and I love John DeBella. I love those guys. Me too. <clears throat> I want to do their radio show. But I don't want to wake up at you know 4 o'clock my time to do their radio show when I don't have to. And here's why. Because if I wake up and I'm exhausted and I go do their stuff, then I got to come back and go to sleep. I lose my whole day. Yeah. And I don't feel good. And it's how I get sick. I, so I don't want to. And, and I told them that. I was like... I don't want to. I love them. And yeah. I, but I said to the, to Meredith who does press and I said to John DeBello, we were texting, I go, I, I just, I could make up an excuse, but I don't want to. Like I, that's basically, I said, I just, I just, I need my sleep. Okay. So all, all right. So I would say the same thing, mm. but I ended, I ended up doing it. I know. I know. I, I could like, like, you don't want to disappoint them. Segura's got the same thing that Rogan and Burr and Stanhope have. And I think you're right. It's a seriousness but it's it's a more directness. They don't mind confrontation. They don't mind telling you what they need or what they want. Yeah, I am not that guy. I will. <laughs> but to your, by the way, there's a strength in that too, Bert. I can I tell you all I see is weakness in it from my perspective. Yeah, is that I cannot tell people. I can't be, uh, maybe, like honest is like if someone texts me and goes, "Hey man," 
Like I, this week, I was like, I can't do the store. I'm I'm only home for a couple days. I want to spend it with my family. And then I get a text last night. Hey, can you do a spot at ten o'clock, Joe? I already know the answer is no, but I go, let me check. Yeah, I know. I go, let me check. Let me check. I do that too. I do that too. Let me push it off. Yeah. Now though, more and more, you save so much time when you just go, nah. You know. Yeah. Oh, dude, I. Sebastian's very simple that way. He Sebastian's said, like, no, yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. Marriage. If you talk to him about marriage and the problems, he goes, he'll, he'll just stop you and go, I love my wife, so I don't know what you're talking. You know, what? Yeah. Like, you know, he, it, some people have a simplicity that's so beautiful. There's a purity to simplicity because I would guess and venture to say that we all at, now at our age and you're younger, but, but you know, we know the answer right away, right? Yep. Right. I mean, I know the answer right away, right? You know the answer. <laughs> it's like when people go, why didn't you call me back? And I go, Oh, I didn't, I didn't. They go, no, your phone was in your hand. You knew that I called. No, I have, <laughs> I have hep C. Yeah. You know, just come up with anything. <laughs> I'm such a beat around the bush. I was, I was mugged. There was a giraffe. I know the answer right away. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You do. You do. And you know the answer right away usually with uh, with somebody you like, with a relationship, with a career. Everything else is bullshit. There's that great saying, it takes five minutes to fall in love and everything else is denial. And people get divorced after 20 years over what they knew about the person in the first five minutes. There's a lot of truth to that. You can extrapolate that in almost everything in life. Yeah. You know, um, you know whether or not you want to be this in your career or, you know, the, the rest is just, nah, it doesn't make sense. I, I, I want to make money, but I don't know if I'd have time to spend it. And then, you know, people who make money aren't happy. Well, there's all these things we put around <laughs> going for our best life. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't like self-help shit, but sometimes you can cut through all the bullshit and just go, hey, bro, what do you want? Really? What would you ask for if you knew you couldn't be refused? Let's start there. Oh wow, that's a great. Where the that's, fuck is that she question going? sucks. What What would you ask for if you knew you couldn't be refused? That's a terrible question. Well, for me, I, I already know. What is it? Well, so I'm in the. Uh, well, I'm only interested in self expression. Yeah. Uh, original self expression. I want to be original, so nothing can help me, <laughs> besides <laughs> sitting around, besides solitude, and uh, time. So uh, th- everything else is. Uh, oh, I mean, I don't give a fuck about. I don't give a fuck about creature comforts because all that luxury is a distraction well what what do you mean what would i ask for i got everything i need house tesla health fuck off what would i ask for i'd like to be six three and have an easy and dangerous bone structure i want to walk in and just be just be fucking physically intimidating i want to smell like leather and tobacco but, but i don't wear leather and i don't smoke tobacco <laughs> I want to be dangerous. I want to be a natural Spartan. Like the guys I saw when I was in Afghanistan doing stand-up and they walked by me and they weren't wearing uniforms and they had long hair and I and they looked like lion men. And I, the fucking gazelle, the cowardly gazelle full of points, full of my delicate points and my long liability of a neck. <laughs> my fucking I looked like a baby giraffe as I looked at them and followed them and it turns out they were something like Delta <clears throat> just a group of Spartans <laughs> bristling with exotic weaponry with their with their with with fucking facial hair that was so thick it would be more at home on the on the back of a boar <laughs> Do you think I thought about this shit? Yeah, I think about this. I thought about this, and they got into a Cessna with no seats and took off to do some damage. I wouldn't, mind, I, I wouldn't mind being more manly. Fuck yeah! And I go, where are those guys going? He goes, that's the dark side, brother. You don't want to be on the receiving end of whatever they're Ooh. doing. And I went, well, fucking a! I'm me and Dove David off. We're like, we're a couple <laughs> pussies. Dove so that's what I'd ask for if I knew I couldn't be refused. But I wouldn't be a stand-up. And part of what makes me funny is the fact that I'm vulnerable. And I walk around feeling like a f- piece of glass. That is, that Did is anybody write thing. that shit down? Because that was a prayer. <laughs> I, I wouldn't ask for anything. I, I just want to be, um, be who I am now. I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm enjoying the, who I am. And I, and I like all my liabilities. and all my. I have a son who's mini-me. Really? My son is just like me. He's he's beautiful though. He's got he's gonna have length of bone. Girls already are crazy about him, so he's gonna have that easy he, seven? bone structure. He's seven, tall, beautiful really? boy. Uh, but but all my strengths and all my liabilities, <laughs> <laughs> all my cautious, <laughs> all the things that. But he could give a shit. 
because he doesn't have a marine father. His father isn't a giant marine. Do you see? Do you, you know? do you do you do you find yourself parenting him as if you're giving an advice to the younger you of the things you missed out on? Of course. <laughs> And I, wait, I, wait, tell me, tell me one parenting advice that you're really proud of, and then one parenting advice that you go, I think that might have been too much of an insight in my darkness. Well, I, well, well, I, uh, I notice when he plays team sports that he's literally running in the opposite direction of the ball. Like he could give up, and I was exactly the same way. And I'm like, Finn, Finn, pay attention, go for the ball. And my buddy Joey goes, dude. You were exactly the same way. <laughs> you never played team sports, so what are you doing? I go, God. But then, then if I, then if you ask my son, if I go, Finn, what's the secret to life? And he goes, practice. <laughs> he doesn't even know what it means. But I, I, there are three things I want to impart in my son. First of all, he's got a great sense of humor, so I want to keep that. Yeah. Uh, I want. But in order to have that, you got to be vulnerable and soft. Well, I guess not totally. Yeah, he, he already has that. that yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's in his body. Um, and then the, he's got a great imagination. And I believe when you have a great imagination, you see danger everywhere. Oh, you extrapolate, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so part of being cautious and a coward, uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way, is having the imagination to see what could go wrong. Guys who do crazy BMX stuff and parkour, they are, <clears throat> they tend to not th overthink things. Yeah. They tend to be, they just get off on the, on the you know on on the thrill for me i'm thinking about all the things that could go wrong but um i want to be able to impart to him uh self-resilience don't take yourself too seriously mm -hmm. that's how you do it just don't take yourself too seriously you're a leaf on a giant tree it's okay man it's okay you know don't don't be don't don't be the hero or the victim of every story you tell it's all right brother you know failure is such a huge part of success oh. so self-resilience and um, and uh, I think the ability to have a, a sense of humor, not to take yourself too seriously, and uh, and I think also teaching him how to learn, learning the art of learning, that's a really important thing. I like. Uh, I wasn't until I was third. Um, no, maybe forty two mm. that I started wanting to learn things. Well, you without realizing it, already have a deep set of skills. And that's another really important thing. You've built deep acumen, which means skill. Look up acumen. What's your name? Halston. Halston? Halston. And do you own land? I do not. Oh. He looks like an aristocrat. Yeah. Halston. What's your last name? Seventy. Halston Seventy. Um, he's related to Chloe Sevigny. Right? Oh, is that true? Yeah. And what is that name? Is that French? Mm -hmm. Sevigny. Mm -hmm. Tu parles français ou non? No. Alors... Uh, well, enough to say no, huh? <clears throat> it was good. Um, I don't either, but I, I can do that, and it sounds like I do. Um, so, okay, then what was the last thing you learned? Like, learn. It, it be, not like a life lesson, but like a skill where you learned it. I, I spent a lot of time learning how to box and, and really? learning how to punch people. When in did the you face. start boxing? Four years ago. You only started boxing But four I mean, years ago? I was always, <clears throat> but Taekwondo and wrestling, I've been doing this. <clears throat> my whole life in one way or another but yeah. um but boxing is really hard and different and makes me nervous me and Segura are starting uh jujitsu mm. next wednesday That's we're going awesome. with russell peters jujitsu is amazing it's but a i already I already form. watched a few videos like i i think you know what i i think i'm obsessive compulsive I, whatever it is if i get interested in something i become like obsessed with like it, it gives me a it's a warm blanket feeling yeah to do nothing but watch youtube videos and look up things on that one thing yeah i'm that way with uh <clears throat> boxing like i i have my i subscribe to various coaches like this guy coach anthony yeah who's an amazing like high level coach who like coaches some of the best juniors junior you know um boxers and some of the great pros i mean so when you when you watch a dude like that I love I love the minutia. And I yeah. and I do the same thing with tennis. Like I still take tennis lessons and and watch Federer in slow motion. I love breaking shit down and then and then I love sparring because it's always really scary and it's where you put your skills in real time and it's frustrating but man you start to learn. You start to learn how to split hands, you start to learn how to how to get catch someone's rhythm and and exploit it. You learn, it's a, it's it has nothing to do with learning how to fight. It has to do with learning something very difficult and uh 
it does something to you. It keeps you open. I think if raw. I think if you find, I I've found that, and I, I don't know because I think sadly I use a lot of these. I exploit a lot of my interests into something for Instagram or my podcast or my stand up. Yeah. Like, but like, you know, be it like the marathon or the triathlon or or growing marijuana or <laughs> I find these things that I get into, and then inevitably it turns into my social media as well yeah but but yeah I, what why jujitsu um eddie bravo I, I we were in the back it was i think you were with us yeah. we we're all talking in the back and i went up behind him as a joke to see if i could take him down <laughs> not, not in a million years and he said to me in su such a matter of fact face and you know i always i i always believe you couldn't touch eddie anywhere on his body i could get eddie and i wrestle i can get any anywhere he could put he could go take any position you want yeah. and i get tapped immediately there's a, there's a part there will always be a part of my brain that it believes that there is always greatness just under the surface mm -hmm. meaning like i the first time i went on a high dive i thought what if i find out right now i have what it takes to be an Olympic diver, and I just never tapped into it. <laughs> and so I love everything that. about uh, my brain thinks that way genuinely. Like when we did Sober October, I genuinely thought I could outwork Joe. I didn't realize what a fucking werewolf I was he's going been, up he's against. Been fucking working out his whole life. He's, uh, never, he's, never, he's never not worked out, and there's nobody more competitive. Oh, there's and nobody I, more. I, there's I, nobody. I roasted him. Me and Rashab roasted him. Oh, you beat Shafir and Kreischer <laughs> at, in a fitness contest. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I'll do that right now. Right, I'll wake up from a nap. What the fuck are you talking about? Stop bragging about that shit. But um, so I went up behind Eddie to take him down. Oh my god! And, and he, but it, was, it was obviously it was a joke. I'm not really gonna. I would yeah. never throw him to the ground. But I yeah. as but he he caught me doing it, and he said in such a matter of fact way, "I would hurt you so bad." And I was like, "What?" Do you he feel goes, how dense he is. Like, he, like, dude, he is so fucking. That's dense. a guy who's been rolling for 25 years you're you're talking about a different body and yeah. you're it's a language for him everything he does is a reaction he doesn't have to think about it there's no patterns he's got patterns are in his body so whatever you do he reacts without even realizing it yeah that's that's called chunking information he's, he's so far ahead of you so it's far. like playing chess with a chess master but it's it's amazing <clears throat> it was it was uh eye-opening for me like like really legit eye-opening the way he said it to me mm. was like, was like if someone goes, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing stand up," and I just go, oh, "Yeah, all right," yeah. and he's like, "I think I could be as funny as you," and I, me just go, "Oh no, no, I've oh, been no, doing no, this for no. 20 years. I, yeah, yeah, no. I'm really good. I'm by the way, I'm good with the good people. I'm good. <laughs> You're not even close." Like, and it's so when so he's ridiculous for them to say yeah, that. Yeah, but when he said that to you me, you have I, four hours. You have five hours of material. Yeah. You, what? <laughs> What are you talking about? And you've, so, you've, yeah. And so he said to me, you know, you should, because I had talked to him about taking jujitsu a while ago, and he said, you should do it. Do you have some time off? And I said, yeah, I'm done my tour next weekend. And you should, you should do it. And I'll tell you why you should do it. He said, you, if you could, if you do it once, you're better than 99% of the people in the world who've never done it at all. Yeah. He goes, you're automatically just that much more prepared to defend yourself. Yeah. And if you do it twice, you're even that much more. But he goes, Bert, if you do it for like a month, yeah. he goes, in any scenario where someone attacks you, That's right. you could defend you. You That's could right. definitely defend yourself. You just learn how and to he goes, And he goes, I'm not saying that you're going to win. I'm not saying like I'm not saying the guy doesn't know more than you. I'm just saying that in just the average scenario that would show up, you could probably defend yourself. And I it's went. It's also great exercise. And he, and he said, and I, I backstage, I was like, I'm having a hard time losing a weight. And he goes, he goes, you might just be in a rut. He goes, jujitsu will take it off you. He goes, you know, 30 minutes, learn a new move or whatever. And then the next hour and a half, you do, you work on that move, you roll with people. And he's like, and then he said, you know, no one's going to fuck you up if you go there. Like no. the whole goal is white belts are what move the academy forward. So it's then, true. That's the difference between boxing is boxing is like the only way to kind of learn is to get punched in the face and it kind of sucks. Yeah. That's the only, but it's the same thing with great boxers. Like, you know, you, you get in there and you'll learn some things and then you get in with a guy who's like a real boxer and you're like, oh my God. Oh, you would take my jaw off my bot. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, cause they, they can just get you to, to think, to see one thing and then they close in with a punch that happens this fast, that fast. Pop up. Yeah. You get touched, pop, and then pop up. That, that's what it happens. Pop up. And you're out. You're, you're on. I'm not that that's, but that's what they can do. I so I so I go back I go back to the back bar and now I'm drinking you know and I'm talking 
oh, I'm getting into jujitsu and Tripoli's like, really? And and then Russell Peters shows up and I said something and Russell goes, you know, I've just started like a few years ago. I, I picked it up again. He goes, I, I've lost all this weight because of it. And he's with the guy, Greg, who I think is his name, who teaches at Jean-Jacques. Yeah, Machado. Yeah, Machado's a place. A legend. And they're like, hey man, it's close to your house. You should do it. And Russell goes, I go every Monday, Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday and Friday mm. at noon. You should do it with me. And I was like, I was like, yeah, maybe I will. And then I called, so I was on the phone with Segura, and I said, you know, I'm thinking about doing jujitsu. He goes, I've been thinking about that. And I was like, well, let's just go together. We'll go with Russell. We'll go on like a Wednesday, and we'll just see if we like it. Like, yeah. you know, and Good. so we're going to go and and just see. I, you know, I've my only fear is I am competitive and I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I've never been, it's easy to be competitive in tennis where it's, it's inside you or yeah. uh, in stand up where it's, I, I'm not really that competitive in stand up, but I am like, I watch people and I go, I get inspired. I go, oh, I'm fucking writing. I know I'm not writing enough. Like I, I mean, I just watched Amy's special. I was like, I got to write more. I got to write more. I watched Nate Bargatze's this morning. I was like, man, I'm not, I literally got in the shower. I go, come on, let's write. Let's write. Did you watch? Did I watch Brian Callen's new? Did you watch uh, Complicated Apes? Bro? No, I didn't. I didn't watch it this morning. Okay. I literally was like, I'm going to watch it. You see where it is in iTunes? Have you seen what it is? You see is what it, I'm doing? What is it, number one? Have you seen what I'm doing? Dude, I, I love, I love. Apparently it's doing well. I don't know. I, I just got a call from Brian Volkweiss, who was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. He was very nice. But look, look, it's the best I can do. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Dude, I, well, I, it's a, it's a, tr it's a transition I'm for you. I'm joking. Uh, Material-wise, though, seriously, because I there is a part of you, I feel like podcasting has, has really grown your voice as a comic is that yeah well no i just decided to actually for the first time uh just i had i said uh, just just have the courage to actually talk about what you what you're afraid of what worries you and what you think about all the time which is a large part of it is the way we talk about each other and how we categorize each other as nouns uh, white, black, brown, Asian, gay, straight, those those words tell you nothing about the individual. And yeah. we're not that. We are, you know, complicated apes. The idea is that we're verbs, we're sinners and saints and everything in between. And you, you don't, you cannot, you cannot just capture somebody in a picture they took when they were 19 or in a in a tweet that they said and say that that's that person yeah. that person's a racist or that person's a homophobe or that person's a uh a, 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 a oppressive tyrannical white male there are assholes in the world of course and their behavior yeah. has to be held accountable but but when you do that to the other side you stop listening and now you purify your echo chamber. And now you are surrounded with people who see the world exactly like you do. That's not how you get smarter. Yeah. You get smarter when you, when you put ideas, to, when we have what's called idea sex or an idea orgy. The fuck do you think a burrito is? Rice from China, meat from the old, from the old world. You got corn from the new world peppers and tomatoes from the new world put all that shit together and you have a mexican burrito <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about yeah you know i mean mexico itself is a product of the inca the aztec and you know the various native native american popul native south american populations and the spanish it's a, it's it's the what is the is it the plaza de tres culturas you know it's the, You're asking the, the plaza of guy. three cultures i mean we we get there's a, an amazing book by joseph henry called the secret of our success which is essentially about how we get smarter when we share ideas china and these countries and and europe and especially western europe developed so quickly because they had waterways that connected people so in china mandarin was able to be i think the yellow river and the yangtze river the, the mandarin it was when when you have one language with that many people they share ideas on agriculture technology and things yeah. like that on government and the same thing was this was western europe because of the gulf stream the rivers the estuaries stayed they didn't freeze the way they did in eastern europe and russia so trade and ideas disseminated i'm doing a history lesson i complicated apes guys because i talk about history but but, but but this is how ideas spread yeah and so you, the worst thing you can do and the problem with social media is that it has allowed us to fucking purify our echo chambers you can there's an algorithm that'll just keep feeding you stories that that feed your confirmation bias you have a feeling and you are going to look for things to keep that feeling going 
It's the difference. That's how a, an atheist will always look at religion as a fairy tale. And religious people are like, religion gives me a lot of meaning. I lost my fucking child or I have a disease that's not curable. The only thing I've got is my faith. And you're coming in here and telling me that I believe in a fairy tale. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Because my, this, m- m- the Bible has been around 25 years, gives me a lot of meaning in my life. And so when, when you start to realize that human beings, like we are emotional creatures and the first thing you got to do is protect that, that feeling when you're talking to someone respect respect that their feelings are valid yeah. and that they mean something to that human being and then you can make some headway but all we do in this fucking culture is try to win an argument i try to beat you i get competitive what about persuasion when was the last time you tried to persuade somebody who don't who doesn't agree with you over to your side you're writing these books and you're 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 fucking making your speeches are you doing anything to actually persuade the people that don't agree with you and that's that's what's lost and it's fucking hard to persuade people all everything's about is getting people to click on your thing and if you know it's that gross man. It's, it's but i've interrupted you because you were talking about and i'm sorry I that i brought it because you were talking about you when you see people who do things well it inspires you to write and oh yeah 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 you, no 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 i don't i don't know what I'm uh on a tangent but i don't know what my point was oh i get competitive i get competitive in stand up but not competitive like oh that guy's got this money or this guy that guy's got this i get competitive in the sense where i go uh i i can be better I, i'm it's, it's internal you're worried that you're going to be competitive in jujitsu i'm going to hurt yourself and me and get fucked up but like, i have a theory on this as i'm getting older too i don't know that like so, so let's just let's extrapolate. You're getting okay. competitive in jujitsu, right? I, I haven't even started jujitsu. <laughs> in the back of my mind, I, I practice fighting because I'm afraid I won't be ready in case the shit hits the fan. Yeah, it's the most ridiculous thing. Here's why: so I can throw a right hand better than <clears throat> some dude who hasn't done it. Let's yeah. say we're at the comedy store and I knock him out. Yeah, because I have a temper. Yeah, and he's hitting you or something. A friend of mine and I do. So, I don't know what it is. Okay, but the good thing I learned how to box, so I didn't get it knocked out. Well, um, there's a cameras everywhere. Yeah. And now I'm in court. And now I probably, it's going to cost me minimum $300,000, but probably more. Yeah. So I'm better off actually Never getting having... punched and then having a good lawyer on, on, on hand. And by the way, you can be an amazing fighter and have a lawyer and then go hiking and you have to worry about ticks. <laughs> so... You got to fight. You've got wait. This you got to fight. You brought this up. That Ticks. brain. That brain that sees the tragedy ahead of things. I got this too. Right. So part of so me. There's goes, no way yeah. to be. There's no way to be prepared for anything. <laughs> so fighting is a waste of time. Yeah. I, 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 I <laughs> fucked you shit so I'm out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so don't be competitive. So, okay, so Do this, it for its own sake. It goes back to what I was saying about Schiller. Do it for the sake of doing it because it's fun and you'll learn and you'll be able to roll and you'll just have was, fun. You'll be a silly was, goose. I was, I just told, I think I just told Eddie and, and Russell this, I was walking through the parking lot right by the, my house and this guy threw his trash out the window in the parking lot. Damn it. And I, and, Piss me off. and I immediately I'm boiling. I'm with my daughter and my wife. I'm uh. boiling. And, uh, and I picked it up. I like. I think I said something to him, like, you know. I said, "Come on, bro." He didn't hear me. I threw it away. And then his friend, unbeknownst to me, was right next to me, and started mocking me to him. He goes, "Oh, come on, bro. They're from Eastern Europe. Oh, come on, bro. Come on, bro." By Serbians. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, beat your and ass. now I'm looking at both of them going. And then the guy's like, "Huh?" And in my head, I go, "Now." Is this something I'm willing to get beat up for? Well, these are bad guys already, right? Dude, they're smoking in the afternoon. They're like smoking <sighs> cigarettes. And they just litter. Like, it, it sounds weird, <laughs> but you can, when somebody just goes, fuck it, they're, they're, you can kind of guess that they're bad all the way around. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like, that quality of life crimes <laughs> usually are, they're, usually they're scumbags. Yeah. They're also rapists. <laughs> oh, that, dude. Not, you know Across I mean? the board. They're, 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 they'll, they'll kill your whole family and the, or they'll <laughs> capture, they'll sell your wife and kids into slavery. They're, they're in some <laughs> Eastern European market somewhere. The guy that litters definitely doesn't care about me too. <laughs> these are the guys from Taken. Yeah. yeah. These are the guys from Taken. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I think they own the 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 whole parking lot because they hang out. They're oh, like Jesus. them and their kids. The bo- young men will all hang out in the parking lot. Wow. And like in like Mercedes, and they smoke, and they're like they're Armenian mafia. Don't fuck. I, they around. must be. They must be. And here I am going, is this worth it? Me yeah. standing up for myself and going, hey man, don't litter. I'm not going to teach this guy anything. So I I didn't I didn't say anything, and I regretted it. No, you're smart. And, and then I and then I fantasy role played different scenarios in which in which in which they were walking to my house and i would fucking do this and then i take out that that stick that the cops are they go sure and then i'm beating the one with it and going this is what happens when you make fun of me yeah yeah, yeah. and then i fantasy role played in my head and then i just did nothing i just did nothing that's the hunter warrior the latent gene inside of you that we all have as men yeah you know what i mean because you don't want to be vulnerable because in, in another time, in another place, oh. those guys kill you and they take your children and your wife and sell them into slavery. Yep. That, that's what happened throughout history. Yeah. So I think we have genetic memory of that, of, of, um, of men who were able to come into your village and do whatever. And you know how, you know how sweet men are oh, when they're in groups on horseback. I am. I come from a long line of people who had their villages taken from them. You did, and that's why you're a great comic. Thank God, the vulnerable. How do you think? How do you think the Jews are so fucking hilarious? Why? Why were the Jews such great artists and scientists and at the forefront of social change? Their entire history has been like, you know what? The economy sucks. Who do we blame? The Jews! <laughs> Get a mob and fucking go kill all of them. I mean, it's just and culminating with World War II. I mean, yeah. for real. Yeah, no, to be a Jew is to be essentially they, they, constantly They built the pyramids, right? Somewhere. They, built, they the pyramids. built everything, and they were always kicked. Hey, hey, you Jews, get out. Get the fuck out of here. It goes back to Exodus. Uh, yeah. Get the Jews out of here. And Moses was like, "Let's. I'll lead you. Guys. Follow me. The sea is going to part. <laughs> I know. Trust me. Just keep walking. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that, well, that the, could, the story of the Jews is, is prob- constantly running away and pissing God off. Do you know that the Old Testament is essentially, I can break it down for you? Please. Have you ever read it? Uh, You're going to hell. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not Jewish, but the, the, the Old Testament is essentially uh, a, a story of not only the, the, the exodus of the Jews, the Jews leaving Egypt because they were being oppressed and they were being enslaved and all that. Mm-hmm. It goes on and on. But finally, Moses leads them out uh, to the promised land, which Moses never actually sees. And the, the Israelites now um, form essentially what is God's kingdom, Israel. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy is downright genocidal. No, uh, is that Numbers? Numbers is later, but the book of Deuteronomy is fucking, I mean, what the Israelites end up doing to that, I think the people of the Valley of Baal and stuff like that. I mean, God punishes them for not putting all of all of them to the sword, including their animals. You, you took their, their chattel, you took their women and children and, and their animals, and you didn't put all, everybody, excuse me, I told you to kill everybody. It's a very controversial passage in Deuteronomy, but... At the end of the day, it's basically every book in, in the Old Testament from, from what I could gather was the Israelites would finally, they finally had a great society. They're, they're, they're doing well. They prosper. Then they start to sin and they start forgetting about God. God sends a prophet, usually a dude with terrible hair in rags. And he's like, guys, listen to me right now. The Babylonians, the Iraqis, the Persians, the Iranians, uh, the Assyrians, who are this nasty group of people in sort of modern day Iraq, they're, they're coming, they're coming, and they're and God's going to send them, and they're going to come in, they're going to raise the temple, and they're going to sell everybody into slavery. I'm telling you right now, start getting more pious. Fuck you, this cuckoo <laughs> bird on the corner shouting God's words. I got fucking money to make it the fuck out of here. And sure enough, and if it wasn't that, it was a plague. So what would happen was the Israel, Israel, God would send a plague, send the Assyrians, send the Babylonians, fucking everybody would die everybody would be taken to slaves they'd come they'd, they'd march him back to persia or whatever and then the jews would be like they'd get close to the persian king like cyrus and be like dude listen 
my people are really suffering. If there's any way, I'm your accountant. I've been making you money here. Come on. I'm your doctor. They, they would just find their way into kind of make, being useful because they had to, otherwise they'd be killed. I mean, it's literally the story of the Jews. And then the fucking Persians, the fucking, the, the, they would overthrow. They'd come back to Israel. They, they'd set up their place. Things would get, be going well again. <laughs> God would be like, all right, you learned your lesson. Sure enough, they'd start fucking up again. He'd set another prophet. Dude, you guys, the book of Kings is, Kings is, I, I believe the Kings are actually the prophets. Yeah. I could go on and on, but the bottom line is it was a constant process of fucking up and then redemption, fucking up and then redemption, fucking up and then redemption. I, I didn't even know that the, like, it's so funny when I hear a story I'm, like I'm, that. I apologize to any Talmudic scholars, any Jews. I know I just encapsulated this insanely rich tradition <laughs> in, in a shitty little soundbite, but I'm, I'm, footnotes, motherfuckers, <laughs> footnotes. Go on. What were you going to say? Do you like reading? Yes. I hate reading. I know. So, <laughs> I, can see the, I can see the glassiness of your eyes as I'm going through the, the fucking Old Testament, the only the foundation of our civilization. And you're like, oh, man, this is boring. <laughs> All I could think was, can I tell you the holy thought I had? So wait, the Iraqis and the Jews knew each other in high school? Fuck yeah. <laughs> But the Iraqis and the the, the, the Israelites, and, you know that they are the Iraq War is so funny because like man, they they're histor- the Iraqis <laughs> they have a historical footprint that that goes five thousand years. You infant, you American infant, <laughs> five thousand years. Five thousand. They didn't years. just show up in the eighties. What? That's why. <laughs> I that's didn't why, know. That's why when George fucking W. Bush. The infant was like, you know what? We're going to invade Iraq and bring democracy. Like Iraq, like you, who doesn't even know the difference between a Sunni and a Shia. You have never read one book on the history of the Middle East, yeah. and all your fucking friends are going to restructure <laughs> Iraq, <laughs> Babylon. They go fucking pick up the Old Testament, motherfucker. They've been fighting forever. They've when been- I first heard of Iraq, it was in the 80s during the Iran stuff. And yeah. then someone said Iraq as well, and I went, "Oh, they got when did that? When did they name that one?" Because I yeah. figured it was like North Dakota, South Dakota. Yeah. Well, it was <laughs> like, it was the British, really? Yeah, the British essentially restructured the Middle East and didn't really take into account the the powerful tribal lines that had already been there for wait, thousands wait, wait, of years. So wait, when was so so the, 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 the Brits were? Remember the Brits colonized most of the world and a great deal of the Middle East and Africa, of course, and, and all over the place, uh, India, so and China, for that matter. The Brits, that tiny little island of pale people, uh, had colonized massive stretches of the it was globe. all over spices, right? It was all over, essentially... Uh, trade routes and um, military advantage and really? resources like timber and rubber and so all is this those like things. is this like the 1800s <clears throat> this was Bert this was yes this was uh the 16 17 I, mean, I know I mean I'm not I know what you're talking about yeah. but I but I don't know details in my head I go yeah yeah I know that about like Hong Kong and stuff yeah World War two changed everything World War two was the was the destruction of old Europe and in in many ways the uh, beginnings of decolonization and, the, and that uh, was Germany went into Africa Germany had been in Africa Jim, Germany had had been in fact in um, in in southern Africa in the country of uh, not Zaire, but in, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everybody. It was, they committed genocide in one part of Africa. In fact, really terrible, terrible really? crimes. Yeah. There's a book about it that I, I, I actually thumbed through recently. Oh shit. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. I was just in South Africa. So I read a couple books on the history what, of South doing Africa. shows down there? No, I was, I was on, I was, uh, I was on safari and I was killing, uh, elephant and rhino for their tusks and horns. Oh, nice. uh, I'm kidding. I love the meat. I, I was eating the meat. Um, it's very sweet and tender. I was poaching and I was looking for diamonds. Um, yeah, I went on safari. I went on safari. Safari is fucking. Yeah. It's it, a lot of it's all just old cattle ranges that are you know. But you can't. The other yeah. thing you learn learn about about what it's, it's so the Dutch boer the it means farmer and, yeah. and the Dutch were farmers and the, the British and the Dutch. Um, when when the British realized that there were diamonds there, so the Dutch settled South Africa because it was um, a trade route for their spices. The Dutch East, East India Company. Yeah, it was a great place to go. You're already glassing over. No, no, no. I know. I, and I know. The, the I know British about this. came in when they found that there was gold and diamonds there. So the Dutch and the British had wars, and the British beat up the Dutch. But but um, uh, when you try to farm that land, okay. When you try to farm and it's very it's very arable land, it's amazing. Yeah. It's an incredible country, one of the most beautiful parts of the world. 
when you try to farm, you can't farm, you can't farm, you can't raise livestock with leopards, cheetah, <laughs> lion, <laughs> and their equivalent of a bobcat. There's no fucking way because uh, and with, you know, wild dogs, if there were, the, you're not doing that shit, hyena, bush pigs. You're not doing it because they they are just too good at killing your livestock. Oh, yeah. You're not keeping cats big cats medium cats out of uh your your you, there's no way to protect those lambs they just decimate everything yeah you're not planting crops sir with cape buffalo and elephants uh, because yeah. elephants come in 30 strong and yeah. they eat everything <laughs> and what are you gonna do with african That's elephants? crazy i never even thought about yeah. that what are you gonna do the get your dogs after them what are you gonna do the you, local you, animals are fucking it's impossible there's nowhere in the world where the local animals are as aggressive uh, the cape buffalo just in general the in cape Africa, buffalo will kill you look cape at buffalo them wrong terrifying. look at them wrong on horseback and see what happens to your face they fucking aren't hearing a peep out of you not a oh, fucking peep. Dude. Cape Buffalo, they they just are resting aggression. So everything in everything in Africa you can't tame. Try taming a zebra. Good luck. Try to ride a zebra. They'll bite you and hold on to you and shake really? you like a dog. Yeah. That the one animal that scared the fuck out of me. I think it was the hyenas. They look like werewolves in transition. They're horrifying. It's like their their hindquarters are lower. Yeah. They usually they just, won't attack a human. They just scared the fuck. That was the yeah. one. I mean, I saw we saw a lion on on uh safari and i was like i was like it looked very peaceful and restful it didn't really do anything yeah. the same with the with the uh hippos they didn't they charged a little bit but yeah. it was fine those hyenas scared the fuck it was either hyenas or dingoes not dingoes no dingoes are in australia yeah hyenas those things scare the fuck yeah, scary as fuck but 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 i think that the, to be a farmer there they were like we got to kill everything we got to kill all the elephants yeah we have to kill everything because they I, i'm planting crops and i'm gonna starve and so what happened was they killed, and by the way, baboons and all the monkeys are a pain in the ass. Those monkeys are aggressive. Yeah, so what they do is they shoot everything. Yeah. You got to shoot everything. And, and to the point where the animals don't even come near, they smell humans and they're like, I'm out of here. Yeah. You keep pushing them that way. And what happens is, um, you know, things go extinct. So then when, when you go on safari in South Africa now, it's old cattle farms that they restock with animals. Is that what it is? And they have to be really careful. You can't put too many lions on a on a huge cattle farm because what they'll do is they're so devastating. Even cheetahs, they eat so much and they're so good at killing that they will they'll eat all your animals. Then and it costs a lot of money you have to restock them. We went we went on safari I think in Tanzania. Hmm. And uh it was That's a, still wild. That was it was it was an it was a 6-hour drive in. Yeah. And a 6 drive right? I think. Yeah, it was yeah. fucking so uncomfortable and i was hung over to like an epic proportion oh my god and i was like oh uh, i was and then i smoked a cigar and my heart started <laughs> racing it was just a fucking nightmare when did you go a few years ago but i was for travel channel oh really yeah it was it was uh it was like a threesome it was like you know a lot of build up you heard about it it's yeah. gonna be amazing and then you're like ah oh, one chick's not that hot yeah and you're yeah. like oh that's how this happens yeah. everyone's a little drunker than i thought Dude, watch planet earth on a good tv yeah it's just nothing comes good. close although there is there was a moment where we were about about probably uh what like 40 feet from a lion in an open air uh safari vehicle yeah and i thought there's a race in your heart that goes like you feel like you feel like food in shoes yeah it's it's humbling it really fucking is yeah i don't like it i i feel diminutive i feel like a bitch and my boxing is no good here yeah your kung fu is no good here sir this is africa three classes of jujitsu is not gonna yeah. help <laughs> yeah you're black you know what's funny about um fighting is uh, like whenever you you like take conor mcgregor yeah who's a badass fighter and you know um, and Connor has uh, got an incredible winning record. And do you know how long Connor McGregor would last with your friend Brendan Schaub? Do you know how long he would last? Uh, not a, not around for real. I mean, I know, but they're, Brendan they're, Schaub was a UFC heavyweight. But like, uh, I'm saying, how I'm just trying. What I'm saying is that no matter how much you practice, there are limits to your your ability as a human being to navigate a threat. So yeah. he's Conor McGregor's a badass. How, how big is Conor McGregor? I have no frame of reference. One sixty-five, five nine. 
Oh, yeah. And no matter be, what, a dog's a never beaten battle. a dog's never beaten a bear in a fight, yeah. especially when they have the same amount of training or even the bear has to have a minimal amount of training. Yeah. And so there is no such thing as a tough guy. Because there's always somebody out there that can. There's always someone that's going to be bigger. Yeah, and if not, they have a weapon. But that was what, that was what was amazing about when UFC first started. Is you'd watch. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, Hoist Gracie. 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 Gracie go in and just lay on his back. Yeah, and like and nobody, wait for nobody them. knew what he was doing. Yeah, and then you technology. It was like that. I mean, remember that's when that I would say Hoist Gracie sold jujitsu more to the world than any one individual they, the gracie family revolutionized everything they are that that guy helio gracie i think the guy helio. Is, is one of the great innovators he's an he's an artist he's one of the deep, greatest he's got some of the greatest stories in the world about him going down to the courthouse to fight that guy to disrespect oh, the jujitsu oh, and jumping in uh jumping in the ocean to uh save someone with a bunch of from a bunch of sharks well, these guys are they were, I mean, and by the way, Hickson Gracie and Henso Gracie and those guys and, and the Machados, and, but especially Hickson and Henso because they're Gracies, they carried that on, that tradition on, I mean, in an amazing way. Yeah. I, I really love those. Talk about amazing and humble men. Anybody who takes jujitsu to that level is, it's impossible not to be humble and uh, they're natural leaders too. They just make a huge difference. There is something, there, there is something, and I think Joe's got this too. But like someone who is like Eddie's got it. It's like someone who's fuck blackberries. By the way, they're yeah. always sour. Keep I going. love blackberries. Always sour. Um, they're they're guys who are like the mo they're lethal, physically lethal, but they're the most calm, centered, like not bully dick. No. Like, but that, but what is it about? Like, I noticed that with the with the Gracies. I try. I I rolled. I did an episode for a TV show with uh, Henner, uh, with with badass. with with Henner and Horian. Henner Horian. Wow. I guess there's they're Hor Horian's sons. Yeah, I love Henner. Yeah, I, 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 they basically just choked me out and beat me the oh, fuck right. up. Henner, I didn't Henner, say I rolled Henner, with them, but Henner does whatever he wants to anybody. I mean, yeah, but they're very so fucking Horian. centered, not dick, not like. I'm sorry, it, Huron, Huron, not not Horian, Huron, Huron and Henner. Horian is their dad. No. So yes, I believe yeah, Horian, Horian is their dad. Yeah. He's he he is the one that came up with the octagon Correct. concept. Correct. Um, but like there there is something about those guys where they don't use like you growing up the guy that was the badass, the guy that was the tough guy, the guy that could fight was the dick in high school. Right. And it was like, and then all of a sudden it flipped. Now it's like the guys that can fight are all the very nice, sweet guys. And then who the fuck are these dicks out there? Who are these bullies? Like what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I... I, I Where's I, anyone coming off being a bully these days and a physical bully when you don't know how to fucking fight? That's always what happens, though, but then they step into a ring or they go into a, a school with guys who fight and Ooh. they learn very... You know what happens when you're a tough guy or quote-unquote a bully and you start training is you get scared right away because what happens is all of a sudden you get knocked out with a left hook or you get choked out or both, and you start to realize there are dudes out there that look like a CPA. There are guys out there who look like uh, my my UPS guy that can do anything they want to me, including put a wig on me and fuck me. And I'm not kidding. And when that that makes you afraid. So now you're in a bar, and when you used to just see a bunch of pussies, now you go, well, I don't know. One of these guys might train, and he might be yeah. a black belt. I can't see his black belt, and. Uh, and, it, and and you you go through this period of fear and caution and the more you train sometimes all that bully goes out of you because you've been humbled over and over again and you become you know they say this about boxers like a lot of times a, a kid who's a real wild motherfucker and getting in trouble and beating people up and stuff and if they stick with boxing because they're around these these men these boxing trainers, these men who probably come up hard themselves and have yeah. this encyclopedic knowledge of what works and what doesn't. They understand training. They understand nutrition. Those old school boxers know things. They just know shit, man. Yeah. Like Teddy Atlas and these guys. They, 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 they have a deep, deep understanding of life. And when a young man stays with those guys, they, they turn all that aggression into artistry. And it's controlled. And a lot of times, in fact, they become humble and kind. That's what I have. That's from a book called The Fighter's Heart, Sam Sheridan's book. 
And he talks really? about that a little bit. Yeah. And I believe that. I've seen that with my own eyes. If you could be a man at one point in history, mm. when would you choose to be a There's man? There's no question that it would be now. Really? Well, I, I have I have uh, representative government. Okay. I have fresh fruits and vegetables aplenty in the okay, winter. You can't time. pick now. You can't pick the I past. Have vaccines you can't pick and the past twenty and years. Anesthesia. I mean, there's no question, and we're getting kinder and closer together, even though there's a lot of problems. Uh, any other time in history? Yeah. Uh, probably around the time Socrates lived in <laughs> Athens. In Athens. <laughs> It'd have to be some temperate climate like 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 uh like Greece. Yeah. I'd probably want to be a Sardinian fisherman. <laughs> because you know, I'd have the sea. I don't even know what that is. I'd have the you sea, mean, I'd have sardines? my goats. Yeah. Anywhere where there was there was temperate, there was sun and good food, and I could grow food, and I didn't have to worry about oppressive winters. Oh. You don't want to be in a place where the winter creeps up. Because it's just you are gonna starve and your kids are gonna die. But Greece Greece feta cheese olives great. wine oh. there was always that in sun and the sea octopus fish and you could eat you could eat raw from the sea no matter what you didn't starve and your kids were okay so the answer is greece i, I talked to my daughters about traveling in europe and one of my daughters said i want to go to greece and i said i can't take you guys to greece it's too pretty for you guys i can't be there with you guys i need yeah. to be there with a young woman I couldn't That's have my so wife true. and my two daughters young Greek woman. in Greece. Oh. Are you out of your fucking mind? I can yeah, take no. you guys to Germany. Uh -huh. I can take you guys to France maybe, but right. not Greece. Not Greece. Greece is fucking gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Man. I swam out naked to a boat in Greece with these girls. They, uh, they were... Did you look like the letter Q? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I was in I, uh, I was in great you. shape back then. Were you? Oh yeah, yeah. I used to be I used to I've never I was I never even knew I was fat until the girl told me I was fat. I don't but, think of you as fat. I just think of you as big boned. Bert. Yeah, Bert. Thanks. I'll take it. Yeah. And we'd swim out naked in Greece uh, out to this boat. And we got on this boat. It was empty. Wow. And the second we got out there, I just realized I was naked. Like, I was like, I never felt more naked. Yeah. Like, I, I was like, oh, this isn't a great look for me. Like, I don't have a big dick. I just got an ice cold fucking ocean. Yeah. Now I'm on some boat. We're kind of breaking and entering. Yeah. And these girls are gorgeous. And I was like, how does this end? I, like, I'm not going to fuck both of them. I'm not that guy. I don't have that game. Yeah. And I was like, I got to swim back. We don't have any beer. I was like, ugh. And you never did it. You never nope, closed the deal. Nope. That hurts me. Because I, I, I uh, was in Mykonos and I met uh, an Italian gal. And she, uh, I remember I woke up from a nap and we had been getting it on. And she was rubbing lotion on her thighs in her bikini topless talking to her friend whispering to her friend in italian so as not to wake me up and i i cracked my eyes and i watched this bikinied italian gal who's probably whatever she was 20 21 my age <clears throat> she was rubbing oil on her brown thighs while on her knees sitting up in the bed across from me talking to her friend who was in a chair and she was like and i was like i would rather be nowhere else than this sight i never i burned that into my fucking brain i burned it into my brain and i'm, I'm gonna go jerk off i'll be right back <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good oh, i love those i always had the i always had the thing when it came to women i remember hearing uh J Bo beer it was a guy that was older than me. I was friends with his brother Scott. Jay Bobier was talking about how he had this girl uh, in his in his in his house, in the room in his fraternity house, and uh, she was naked and she had to get out of there. He had to go to class, and he left her naked in his bed and then came back and had sex with her when he got back from class. And I remember I was like probably in tenth grade, eleventh grade maybe, and it just it God. it burned a visual of like that's I want my life to be that yeah, way. Yeah, that's so powerful. And then I remember being a freshman in uh in college and leaving a girl naked in my bed and going to class and i remember being like i like oh put the flag in the moon i've claimed this this is my life yeah. now and all those moments like I, I remember i remember being in like eighth grade going like my buddy was in ninth grade and was dating a girl that had tits and he had felt her tits and i was like oh, i want to date a girl with tits every time i look at my wife i go i'm dating a girl with tits <laughs> Like I fucking, it I is got, the I greatest got tits thing I world. can play with. Yeah, it never. I think you chase that sensation the rest of your life. The, I, yeah, it never stops. 
you know. I wonder I wonder sometimes about it. Like I'm very for me there's a disconnect in like there's not a disconnect in sexuality, but there's a disconnect in like in this married life versus like that young guy that was like chasing hot women. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, again, I think that young guy chasing hot women is, is looking for a sensation that becomes its own addiction. And I think that you get older and you, you kind of have some nostalgia for connection, building something that lasts all that stuff. It's really hard to do. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Do you ever have any girls? Do you have any, ever any girls that you hooked up with? Not, not, not maybe maybe one night stand or whatever that you don't remember their names but you wonder what they're doing now yes i have a girl in chicago i think her name was stephanie she was the coolest chick she was just really a great person yeah and uh, yeah, i was that like connection and it happens immediately right? yeah and, and, and we i was in my just started doing stand-up and i was living in new york i was on living on cornelia street right above poe Great. Poe is a great restaurant. Dude, yeah, above the Cornelia Street Love Cafe. Po. It was great. You used to eat there all the time. Every night you come, we'd come home. Oh, it's the best street. Fucking best street in the village. $2,000 a month. What? Two bedroom. What? I know. I should have purchased it. God damn it. You should have purchased that. <laughs> it's the greatest street. In, that's it might ever, be the greatest street in the village. Is, it, it might be. Have you ever lived in New York? Yes. Really? For years, where? For years. For years? Yes. I lived everywhere in New York. Really? I lived everywhere from 23rd between... Uh, Sixth and seventh at the time with Patty Jenkins, the great director. Yeah. Um, to uh, Avenue A and Eleventh. Ooh. Uh, to uh, back when it was Avenue A and Eleventh. Uh, back when they said you're if you go to A you're adventurous, B you're bold, C you're crazy, and D you're dead. And uh, I mean everywhere. I, I, the West Village I lived for on Bank Street for a summer. Um, I mean the Upper West Side I lived for four years on 73rd between Central Park West and Columbus. Does it make you sad at all when you think about, when you think that that, that like sometimes I think to myself, I'll, I'll never be a, a, a farmer in France. Yeah. Because like I, I, my life's already figured out. I got kids yeah. and, I, and I can't just, like I, I really get bummed sometimes when I think about like going, so I, I guess I'll never run a vineyard. I know. I think about this. I, I, that's so fucking weird you say that because I want to. I want to. I want to run a vineyard. I want to have a working olive oil farm outside of Rome. Yeah. I want to be a Spanish dancer in Barcelona. I want to <laughs> speak Spanish, and I'm not kidding. I want to be. I want to be in a dance gypsy dance troupe. I want to be a gypsy. I want. Yeah. I want to dance for a living. I want my feet to ache and have to wrap them, <laughs> and I want to have to drink some wine and take an aspirin, and I want to. I want to have. I want to. I want to have dangerous. I want to have dangerous relationships with my dancer women. Dimitri Dimitri Estate in in San Ynez. Yeah, it is one of my favorite places I've ever been on the planet. Right, I Dimitrius Dimitria Estate is okay. I think the name of the vineyard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah. Um, have you done stand up there? No. Okay, I did stand up in a in a vineyard uh, up there. But go on. But I and and I think to myself, I really love their life there. It's the dad, and I think the son now runs it. God. The mom and dad still live on the estate. The son runs it with his buddies. San and, San Inez. In San Inez, wow. and it's it's just beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's that it's that old like Spanish, Italian, yeah, Spanish like yeah. villa style, yeah, 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 yeah. like very like curved yes. everything and yes. wo big wood Spanish villa. Yeah, and it's and it's overlooking the vineyard where everyone their tables out and everyone drinks and you can eat sandwiches there's nothing better dude there's nothing better and i go that maybe that's not my dream in life but i wish that i had that opportunity i wish you i could, just can't pivot like i'll never i'm never gonna live on in the outer banks in north carolina now ever I know, because i've dude. got my kids and my wife and my things here and this is what i do I, it's called i know exactly what you're talking about and uh when i ate at grut estancia which is the oldest vineyard in South Africa, I believe, and this this insane food and this insane wine, it was the most. Again, you're just your 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 heart aches a little bit because you're like, I'm never going to be a chateau owner. Yeah. But I have a theory on all of that too. Okay. And I think that, um, in fact, that's longing to change your geography, and it never changes your inner geography. It will for a while. A, a view, and this new thing like Tuscany for a while and then it'll become the normal and you'll still be left with managing your relationships you'll still have you can you imagine how badly you would miss the road and doing stand-up and i got news for you 
there ain't nothing better than what we do. And I mean nothing better. I mean, I'm talking about rental cars. I'm talking about the hotel. I'm talking about fucking whatever it might be. I'm talking about Buffalo in the winter. Fuck off. Yeah. I'll take it all because I'm a comic and I'm doing, I'm, I can't believe I do this shit for a living. That does. Spanish dancer, keep it all. At the end of the day, there ain't nothing better than getting up with a mic and doing what we do oh. on that level. Come on, bro. Then, then having an idea in the morning and then taking it to fruition that Fucking night. Are you kidding me? And I'm then... sold out. I can't believe I sell out. I'm. S hey, by the way, sorry, Philly. Well, <laughs> we added a late show Thursday. Good luck getting tickets to that. <laughs> and by the way, Calgary sold out already. Adding a a a, a, four, a, a show on Thursday. So sorry, I had to, I can't believe that shit. I can't believe Denver, it. Denver, the end of April. Get your tickets now. They're going fast, you fucks. I can't. I twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh. Do you ever Comedy go? Works do you downtown. ever have you ever been walking around and going? I can't believe it worked out. Well, by the way, I don't do that because it, I'm tw I'm fifty two. It yeah. took me twenty five years. I'm the fucking <laughs> yeah. slowest. I'm a piece of shit. Like, oh hey, Bri, you're successful. You're selling out clubs. It took me 20 years. Dude, me too. Me too. It took me, tw it took me 19 years to sell a ticket. It's not that impressive. <laughs> I mean, I mean any, anything you did, play the piano, do jujitsu, <laughs> learn surgery. You can learn surgery. You can get your sur You can become a surgeon in seven years. So shut up. Oh, okay. Hey, Brian, you made it. I'm 52. I'm, some you people are retired already, and then I'm bragging about having to sell. I had, I had a show. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Aren't you shocked? Like, I know that there are some people that expected it to happen. Some people are like, yeah, yeah, this is what I was going to be me. famous. I was going to be a great comedian. Of course. Like, like there are people, I won't say names, but there is someone I'm thinking of right now that I, that even I'm like, I go that, as, by the way, it's not one of our friends. Okay. Yeah. So it's not, don't want anyone to speculate, but there's like one person where I go, you're so confident that you deserve this, but I don't find you that funny. And I know people don't find you that funny. How do you have this like insane believability of that that I I this is my calling? It's called I, the arrogance of a loser. It's yeah. called a guy who doesn't know the difference. And then and then I look at the equivalent like guys, of a guy who's cocky who never got punched in the face. Yeah. I mean, that's always, exactly what it is. Yeah. And then I look at guys like me and you specifically. Yeah. Where I go, I'm forty six. Yeah. I just started doing well in stand-up yeah and i go I, i'm so grateful but i i was walking through denver and i went i can't believe it it worked out this much i know dude it's like uh i'm i have a tv show on abc people are like what's the so you you're so successful like what would you say to actors starting out what would i say what <laughs> what i'm f um okay well let's see here's the brian callen method come to la Get mad TV because you got lucky and then don't work. Basically, don't work from 30 to 40. <laughs> but wake up a lot in a cold sweat because you're a failure and sit in a lot of traffic, but also stay in class and do scenes nobody else is going to see and do bad stand up in little venues, but keep failing. So that'll be that'll be your 30s. You're suck through your 30s, but then it doesn't end. Then hear no a little bit less in your 40s, but hear it 97% of the time. And 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 don't do well, but get small parts for a day on the hangover, hangover to and hold on to that. But you're, you suck. Don't work for months. And then when you're 45, get a recurring called on on a show called the goldbergs you still go many 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 <laughs> months jobless and be on the road not selling tickets not thursday enjoy your 16 people you fucking zero you you stranger oh. to the world and then and then you'll get up you'll finally you'll get a podcast that because brennan Chobb's really business-minded <laughs> <laughs> will have some success and you still won't sell out and then when you're oh. and then when oh. you're 52 when oh. you're 52 you'll have a special that <laughs> didn't even get on netflix or showtime but somehow people are kind of liking it because it's called complicated age they are liking it like it is up there in the charts oh. whatever that means <laughs> and for the first time ladies and gentlemen you have to add shows for the first time in 52 there it is, guys. It only took me from the age of 20. I, I think I, oh yeah, I got into theater school when I was 24. Yeah, so you know oh. what? 27 years later, I'm doing all right. 
I'm doing all right <laughs> for now. Yeah, for now. For now, and I don't know how long it's gonna last. Oh. And I'm and I'm I'm not exaggerating. So you want to be successful? It takes fucking forever. Those are the those are the three steps that is, to success. That is. Can I tell you, man? That is the most inspirational speech I've ever heard. Good. Because I think I think more people can connect with that. They should than, be able to. Like that's that's real. It's real. There's no there's no shortcut. You want to be good at stand up? See you in ten years, but not really, really fifteen. Yeah. I don't know. Any, I don't know. Do you know an exception? I'm friends with the funniest people in the world. No. The best best comics in the world, from you to Rogan to there. I mean, look, we were all funny, but yeah. I'll see you in ten years. It just takes to get your voice to find your voice. Just, it's got to be. Ten, it's got to be ten before I. It's anything I want to hear you say. Correct. Uh, and Correct. I. I and you can I, do tricks. I always had tricks. English on the ball. Uh, yeah, I had a lot. But as of far tricks. as like talking about something that mattered to me. No. Oh yeah, I I, I know. I, I, it took me forever. I think I just found my voice. What time you got to be out of here? You got to be there at one. Yeah. What what time we'll is get it? you, it's twelve fifteen. We'll get you out in a, few, a little bit. Um, but yeah, I five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You're a good um, kid. The I love doing this. By the way, thank you for having me on. You, but you, I, one of the things that it's like my comp, oh, dude. Please, any fucking time I could, I not only could I talk to you forever, I could listen. That last Rogan appearance you did was so good. Really, dude, I loved it. Thank you. I love. I, you're someone who has, and I haven't done this as much, maybe, or maybe I haven't. I'm not noticing it. But like Burr is a great example of a guy who did a podcast. And felt that that was his natural voice, and allowed that to leak into his stand up more and more, mm. you know. Mm. And so, and and you you are like that immensely. It's like from when I first saw you do stand up to where you are today, mm. I go, oh, this is this art form of podcasting has has really left a thumbprint on him. Yeah, with with what you do with stand up, mm. and and you see, I mean, I think Delia is probably the opposite. I think his stand up was his thumbprint into his. Yeah. podcast maybe yeah. same yeah. with theo maybe yeah a little bit those guys are those guys are bullshit they're phonies they shouldn't be in the business i agree you know and so I mean? <laughs> i'm saying it now delia and I, I boycott both of them i love them both delia delia when when i posted my like i, I did a the post on complicated apes you know yeah. like it's out and then delia the first comment was if you follow me don't buy this don't download this i was like you motherfucker uh, we should do a big competition where it's all the guys who talk shit to each other competing against each other. So it's like Dilly and Segura versus me and you yeah. versus Ari and Joe versus. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> idea. It's a good idea. We should do a big, uh, a big, huge, like a fucking scavenger hunt from one side of the country to the other. Something. I think we should have a dance off. I think we should all work with dance I would coaches love and, that. and try to be the best dancer. Would, you, dancing do dan with the would stars? you do dancing with stars a, in a heartbeat? For real? Yeah, I love dance, and I and I. In a heartbeat. Why aren't you on Dancing with the Stars? I don't know, but I need to get on it because I would do it. It, it, it. I think it takes. It's a big time commitment. It's a huge time. But commitment. But I would do it. Like I would do it. I'm. I. I would do it because, it, I, it scares me. But I want to be a dancer so badly. I'm a. I'm a pretty good dancer. I was. I was a big break dancer when I was a kid. Oh, you were. Yeah. And I, I can dance. I can dance surprisingly good. But. I'm, I'm, but I'm, I had a really hard time learning a dance. I had to learn. Yeah. The. Uh, Samba, is that it? Yeah, one salsa. In, or? No, the, what's the one they do in Brazil? Ramba, sal, salsa, merengue. It's the one that Flamenco. you do f during, uh, I don't know, I oh, forget I what it was, know. but I, I couldn't learn it. I could not yeah. learn it. And so I was like, but I'm a good dancer. And then when I got there, I just kind of improv it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I got it. Yeah. It's, I was like looking at everyone else. I was like, I think if you break it down to me, I get lost. Yeah. But if I can just figure it out, I go, oh, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Well, dancing is something that I'm, I seriously want to start doing i want to start learning if me and you went into a cabin in the woods yeah and we could bring two comics and do one fun kind of crazy activity for one of the days who would the two comics be and what would be the activity well i feel like i mean how long do i have to be there because for, we get there friday oh we hang out saturday and then we do the activity oh, sunday if it was forever it'd have to be two female comics <laughs> The last okay. Lessinger and Whitney Cummings because okay. they're hot and funny. My wife and said to me, "If you ever do a sitcom, you need Whitney to be the what? Your wife." I love Whitney and I, and said, I love really? Eliza. I love them both. Yeah, I love them both too. And I think they're both phenomenal comics. She Eliza, was, Eliza is like, I mean, Eliza is a to me, to me personally, I think she's one of the great comics. She is. She kills uh, me. She is. I saw her last special. It was fucking great. She's a killer. Yeah. She's a fucking killer, man. She she's really such is. a pure comic, man. With all the liabilities and all the strengths. She's just 
she's amazing. She just and by the she, way, so is Whitney. I love. Oh Whitney. yeah, I love her. Eliza is just funny. Yeah, man. Like she. Called, I, I don't think of them as like female comics. They're yeah. comics, and they 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 can hold their own with anybody anytime. Yeah, they're just badass. What about what about okay? Two male comics. What would be the activity? Oh, so 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 who are the two the comics? Who would the two male comics be, and then what would be the activity? In a cabin. In a cabin, and we have a lake there. We can do whatever we want. We can go skydiving if you want. We can rent motorcycles. We get Rogan to teach us jujitsu because he's a legit black belt. Yeah. Now that's bullshit. Do yeah. we want to roll around in a cabin? No, 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 no. I, no. I, I want. I would. Would you want to go hunting? Well, so so one hundred percent, we're in a cabin, so we have to go kill animals. We could, or we could do. There's Rogan's a lake got. We could Rogan's do. got weaponry, and he has good experience. So we bring Rogan, and we bring, we bring, probably. Segura, so that if shit broke down like Lord of the Flies, we had a piggy. Yeah, but we could bring we could bring Dalia because I can bully him. Because all of a sudden he's in the he's in the woods and he becomes my beta, and and he can't he's not a pack mule yet. He doesn't have the legs for it. So we make him we make him entertain us. Hey, you fur bird, get up and fucking make us laugh while we eat our kill. <laughs> and then I throw him scraps. Fur bird. Yeah, and I bully him the whole weekend, and I change things up for him a little bit. We should do a, a comedic Lord of the Flies where we all go out to an island and just see where we fall. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. Me, you, Dalia, Shab, Rogan, Ari, Segura, Joey Diaz. Shab, Shab, is, Shab is leader because on the island, he's just so fucking strong. Yeah. He's, he's terrifying. So if Shab, Shab is, Shab would end up being the, the supreme alpha because he can kill all of us with his bare hands. Now... I have a bad temper and I I am devious. So I would organize you f- pussies because you guys, you know that I'm not hearing a peep out of any of you fucking people. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hearing a peep, right? So let's start there. Take all the jiu-jitsu you want. I'm not hearing a peep out of you, <laughs> Diaz, fucking Shafir. Who are the other fucking guys? Segura, Dalia, Dalia. Segura. I'll beat you all up at the same time. We know this, right? We know yeah. this. Do we all know this? Good. Yeah. Now, Shab, though, I got it. Now I gotta, I gotta have you guys on my side because we might have to kill Shab. <laughs> and we do it start. when he's sleeping. It's gonna be very scary. And I don't know if we can pull it off for real. I don't know if we can pull that fucking. I, it. He's. He's. I couldn't taking kill him. a lot of us down with I it. I couldn't kill him with no weapons while he slept. It'd be like trying to kill a polar bear. I mean, we we have to. I gotta I gotta get a sharp stick, and I gotta stick it right in his fucking jugular. I got a coconut, both hands up over yeah. his head, waiting for you to give me the, the go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah th- that's what happens because Shab is just. But you guys might turn on me. Hmm. You might turn on on the old old gray. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might turn yeah. on old gray. So I don't know because. It'd be a, it'd be a difficult and interesting time, but I think ultimately we'd all be great because we'd be laughing and we'd. Uh, Shafir's such a good guy. Oh. Shafir's such a fucking like. Uh, you know what I love about Ari? What he doesn't care about himself that much. No. Well, you're the same way. Like none of us are. I don't feel like any of us are um, selfish that way. I don't think I I, I, why, I don't think I am. I know Ari isn't genuinely. Yeah. Dalia and Shab are probably the most radically selfish people on the planet. And but Segura. And, and Segura too. So they'd be there in their own clique. Yeah. But they'd need us. Although I don't know how to make fire or really catch food. We'd be eating snails and crying in a corner. Yeah, I don't think I could. I, I you would... got it here. When you're on the island, here's what we do. Okay. You got to find shelter and yeah. you got to find water. Where's your water and where's your shelter? Start there. Then you got to make a fire. You got to find a way to make a fire. I fire, can focus on making fire. Yeah. Then we can go about foraging for food. Mussels, clams, uh, fish. I'm I, probably the best swimmer out of all of us. Jesus. Really? Yeah. You ever seen Shop swim? No. He looks like a giant seal. <laughs> can he swim? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Wait, he grew up in Colorado. Doesn't matter. He can swim. He floats. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's got that extra power. I swam for the triathlon. I swam. Wow. It was a quarter of a mile. It's not very Jesus. far, but man, that there's a difference between people who can swim yeah. and people who know how to swim. Yeah. Like, well, you would go, you would go and you would go and, I'd go, and, I'd and go get us, a, you would go and empty the lobster traps. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be spearfishing. I'd be swimming to the bottom, grabbing mussels. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd like that. You'd find, you'd find 
pearls. I'd find my my avenue of use usefulness and just do that. Yeah, like, like I'd be like, hey, is anyone a good? We, swimmer? we would delineate. We would men delineate authority very well. We, 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 the hierarchy just finds its place. I would love to do that. I would, would you go to an island for a month? A month is way too long, Bert. <laughs> it was okay. simply way okay. too long. Last question before I get like, yeah. Would you, being dead serious, yeah. would you go to boot camp for the, for the Marines with, with the same group of people, even yeah. add a fuck couple, right? Sure. Maybe like, Theodore Santino. Yeah, sure. I, I would do it. Camp. I don't know if I'm. I don't. Not a know month. If, not a month. But we go for one full week. I would do that. But I'm. Uh, yeah, I would do that. A uh, fifty-two. I wonder if something would pop or break. But I, I'm in pretty good shape, so I would try. I yeah, I could try. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, I couldn't do buds. It's too cold. But boot camp Marines would like be just like a general boot camp where yeah. we get our heads shaved. We go in. I wouldn't get anything from that though. I don't feel. You don't think so? Mm, I mean, I've done my own version of that. In my, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm. I'm I'd be like, oh god, this guy's screaming in my face. Yeah, I mean, I'd be like, I, it wouldn't affect me the way it would if I was eighteen. Yeah, and I, and I needed it. Yeah, I'd be like, Ooh. this is a guy much younger than me, and yeah, I get, I get that this is what we do. Yeah, yeah, okay. Crawling on my belly, it's 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 great, but you know, I don't know if I could do it. We'll go to an island then. I'll organize yeah. it. You will. Yeah, and then we'll right. only live by corporate integrations. Okay. So they'll drop off like. We're sponsored by Napa Valley. <laughs> Just yeah. wines. Yeah, just tons of Roasted wines. suckling again. <laughs> when that, when those sand fleas were getting you and then you had to jump in the water, Bert, it was crazy. Dude, you are the best. You I really know. are the best, man. Thank you you were one, like legit one of my favorite people to listen to, to talk to, and congrats on the special, man. Thanks, brother. Fuck Thank yeah. you so much. And thanks for, I love talking to you and I appreciate it. Dude, I could talk to you for fucking hours. My wife's going to be pissed that she didn't get to hang out here because now she's into podcasting. I love it. And she's like discovering podcasts that have been like, <laughs> and she's like, she, you know, she said to me the other day, she goes, you know, I just listened to Rogan. And I said, you've never listened to Rogan's podcast? She goes, no, they, they're three hours long. And I went, oh, hold on one second. I don't know if I can talk to you if you just started listening to Rogan. Yeah, that's how I used to say it with Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, I'm like, you know, the road. I was like, hey, don't talk to me about the road. <laughs> road. You don't talk. You're a pup. You're not a dog. You don't talk to me about anything. Don't ever talk to me about stand up again. Like, <laughs> I used like to, me talking to I, Eddie. And about... he'd be like, come on. I'm like, it's like me trying to take down Eddie Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Certain things you're not allowed to talk to me about. Oh, dude, you're the best. I'll get Thanks, you out of here. Thank you. Fuck yeah.